So we open Illustrator and we find a screen that is something like this. We have a little welcome screen sitting here before us. And the first thing we need to do is go ahead and click the print document, at least for now, to learn the fundamentals. Now, when we do that, we get a few options here that are available for us. We can actually choose the number of R boards that we want. We can choose the size and change the size out. We can actually change the unit of measurement as well under here for pixels. We can change that, of course, to inches, uh, millimeters, centimeters, and so forth and so on. But let's just leave it at letter size for now because what we're trying to do is really get a fundamental understanding of how Illustrator works. Now, from my perspective and the way that I teach really uh, almost everything uh, when it comes to software and technology is I try to break it down to its most fundamental components. Usually, uh, what I try to do is break it down to the top three to five things that you have to know in order to really just barely get around uh, in the program. And, uh, and different pieces of software, of course, have, have different, uh, different bases uh, that you need to touch on. Um, for instance, with Flash, uh, what we would say would be, at least what I would say, would be the, the top three things that you sort of need, or top five things you would need to know. Um, certainly, you know, you'd put the timeline in there. You'd put uh, something like the properties panel in there. You'd put the library in there. Those are things that are that are used sort of consistently. You need to know something about what the what the stage is. Um, well, with Illustrator, what we have is is the pen tool, which we find right over here on our toolbar, and we have the direct selection tool, which is the white arrow tool. And if we click and hold down and drag, we click and hold down, we've got something called a flyout, or um, or it's also called a tear off, depending on uh, which piece of software you're talking about. Um, it's called a tear off because you can release your mouse button right there and then and, and it tears off so that you can actually have it hanging out here in the in this rest of the screen. Let me close that up. I'm gonna go ahead and click it again and hold down. And and I know that this has a flyout because see a little triangle that's right there in the bottom corner of that icon. That little tri uh, that little triangle lets me know, hey Gary, this is really gonna gonna have more stuff there. So if I click the type tool, then I know I have a fly out here. If we look down here, then I should know right away that this is not really going to have a fly out for me, right? If I click it and hold down, there's nothing there for me to grab because there's no triangle in the bottom right corner of that icon. But the eraser, on the other hand, will have a couple of other things at least. And what we'll also notice is that if we just hang our cursor over something, we get a little we get a little description there. It says direct selection tool, and then in parentheses it says the letter A. Well, that is my admonition to you right now to get your left hand out of your lap and uh, and make sure that one hand is on the mouse and one hand is on the keyboard. That way you can execute key commands, okay? Now that little A that you saw, whenever we hung that over there, that little A in parentheses is telling you the key command. It's saying, hey Bozo, if you touch the A key, you're going to pull up this tool. Now the pen tool is a P, and the convert anchor point tool is shift C. And those are the three tools that I want you to focus in on while you're learning Illustrator, okay? It's still going to take an investment of time to really understand Illustrator. Having said that, it's going to take a lot less of an investment of time if you'll, if you'll sort of uh, do what I'm telling you to do here. So let's go ahead and, uh, and let's try this out. So if we hit the A button on our keyboard, we get the direct selection tool, which is the white arrow tool. If we hit shift C, we get the convert anchor point tool. And if we hit P, we get the pen tool. And you'll notice this little icon here will change because the convert anchor point tool is one of the flyout options of the pen tool. So, and, and of course, when we, when we uh, select that convert anchor point tool manually there, we can uh, hit the P key and it changes to a P. We hit shift and C at the same time, we get the convert anchor point tool to pop up again. So A, P, and shift C, and you've learned immediately your, your three primary tools that you're going to use within Illustrator. So let's go ahead and discuss briefly uh, what we can do with each of these tools, okay? One of the things we can do, let's start with our pen tool almost always. If you'll notice, the pen tool has a pen icon and a little X beside it, that little small X. Computers are dumb. At their root, they're dumb because they don't understand what we want them to do. In fact, we have to learn their language. We have to learn something about them and what they're trying to tell us. Well, that little X is where Illustrator is trying to talk to us, and we have to learn what it's telling us. Okay? It's dumb. It doesn't really know how to say it in a smart way, so it, so it just sort of gives us a little bit of information there. So whenever I click, the little X changes to a minus because if I... Uh, if I if I were to click back on that same uh, anchor point that I established, it would delete that anchor point. 
that little minus. So what that little minus does is it automatically turns into this little delete anchor point tool. And there are a few other things that that, that, that little X is going to turn into, and we'll talk about those later on in future videos. But if I click once, I establish what's called an anchor point um, in some pieces of software. Like, for instance, if you're working in, uh, in uh, something like Corel Draw, you would find that that uh, anchor point to be referred to as a node. So, it, so it'll be called a node or an anchor point depending on, on uh, what book you read and, uh, and uh, what piece of software you're really referring to. Okay, But, but uh, people will use those terms fairly interchangeably. So if we click again, we establish a second anchor point, which is lovely to see. So we have anchor point A. I'm going to name this one A. And we have anchor point B. I'm going to name this one B. And then in between anchor points A and and B, we have path segment one, path segment one there. So that's a lovely little thing to see. We have anchor, two anchor points and a path segment. Now keep in mind, when I had one anchor point, there was no path segment because a path segment is defined by two and only two anchor points, okay? That is vital for you to know. That's vital for you to keep up with. And as you learn, as you, as you become more and more familiar with this, this is going to crystallize for you, and you're going to go, oh, wow, Gary told me something really important right, right away. And a, a path segment is defined by two and only two anchor points. Okay. Now, conversely, an anchor point, an anchor point can help to define one path segment or up to two path segments, never more, never more than two. Okay, let's go ahead and, and illustrate what that what happens there and what I'm talking about. So if I click again, I establish, let's call this anchor point C. So now we have anchor point A, anchor point B, and anchor point C. We have path segment one and path segment two, right? Now, if we take a look at this, I'm going to switch to a new tool. I'm going to go to the direct selection tool, which is the white arrow tool, which is A on my keyboard. Click, and I'm on A. If I click the first anchor point there, which is anchor point A, and move it, you can see that it affects path segment one, but it does not affect path segment two. You notice no matter what I do to anchor point A, path segment two does not change. Conversely, if I hit uh, anchor point C and I move it up, down, inside, and out, you notice path segment one doesn't change at all, only path segment two changes. So I can move that around just a little bit more, move it around a little bit further, and I notice that that no matter what I do to path segment two, no matter what I do over here to anchor point C, path segment one doesn't change. However, path segment one is half defined by A and half defined by B. Path segment two is half defined by C, as in cat, and half defined by B, as in boy. So B is an anchor point that is common, it's in common with both path segment one and path segment two. So if I move anchor point B, both path segments change, right? Both are actually affected and impacted by that. So this illustrates that point that I made where an anchor point can define one, uh, one path segment or it can help to define up to two path segments, never more than that, okay? So as we build more complex objects, you need to recognize that if you wanna change something, it's going to depend on only two path segments. Now, there are different aspects of path segments we're going to talk about more in just a few moments, okay? But hopefully for now, this uh, this really starts to clarify and crystallize a couple of things. I've given you a couple of rules that really should, uh, really should get you moving with Illustrator right off the bat, okay? I hope that helps.